Good morning, Crossroads. Merry Christmas. We are so grateful that we get a chance to spend a little bit of this morning with you. Uh, from the Crossroads family to your family, we wish you a, a heartfelt Merry Christmas. Uh, we are so excited to celebrate the birth, not just of a baby, but a, but a king. The birth of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. What an amazing, amazing moment this is. Would you join us this morning just as we gather around some song and then around the story of the birth of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Just join with us this morning as we sing and as we share. Singing out the first Noel, the first Noel, the angels did say was to certain poor shepherds in fields they lay in fields where they lay.
sweetly singing o'er the plains and the mountains in reply echoing their joyous strains So this morning, it's, uh, it's my, uh, my pleasure, my honor to, to really share with you the story recorded for, uh, by one of the uh, biographers of Jesus. Um, and, and it's just ironic when you think about it. it the story I'm going to read is coming from Luke, and Luke was a physician. And so he was very much about detail, and it's probably the most detailed account of the birth of Jesus. And it's interesting to think uh, what he probably went through as a physician recording Recording a, a virgin birth, uh, here was a medical professional uh, uh, talking about the supernatural work of God in the, the birth of Jesus. And he records in chapter 2 of the Gospel of Luke uh, these, these, these days. He says this, In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. Stop there for a moment, and he opens up by anchoring the birth of Jesus Christ in world history. What I love about the scriptures is every detail counts. And he attaches the, the moment in time that Jesus was born to that of world history, Caesar Augustus. And there was a decree that went out, and hey, these days we can sure relate to these decrees because they seem to come out quite often during this, this COVID season. The decree goes out that the census is going to be taken and they have to return to their hometowns uh, to be registered. We pick up verse 4, And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. I have to stop there in verse 4. 
what I just read to you was, a, was really a pile on of prophecies, just fulfilled in that one statement alone. Uh, five, six, seven hundred years before this very moment in time, there were prophets of old talking about the city, the place, Bethlehem, the city of David where Jesus would be born. He would come from the lineage of David. And we have captured just in that one verse all of those prophecies packed together. Listen to verse 5. He, he went up there to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Here again, not only the fulfillment of prophecy, but you have, you have Joseph taking Mary on this journey. She's nine months pregnant. They're going up to Bethlehem. Uh, it's a long ride. It's about the distance you figure from Los Angeles to Bakersfield. Mary's nine months pregnant on the back of probably a donkey, a horse of some sort. Uh, not, the, not the greatest traveling conditions, but the time came. The time came for her to give birth. If you, uh, if you remember, many of us can remember the time our kids were, were born. And I remember Stacy saying, it's time. There's something about that time. It's time to give birth. And, and Luke records that. And what's interesting is, is she gives birth to her firstborn son. It's interesting to note that Jesus had brothers and sisters. And, and there she, she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Now, we have our own contemporary pictures of a nativity scene. It's usually uh, a very white man and a very white woman with blonde hair, blue eyes, and this fair-haired little baby with blonde hair, blue eyes, because that's what Middle Eastern babies and couples look like, right, over there. But the reality is they weren't necessarily in the nativity scene that you and I see at Target or we pick up at the local store. It was most likely a cave. It's where the animals were kept during winter. And he, he, was laid in a, he was laid in a manger, which sounds sweet for the song, but the reality is it was probably a feeding trough uh, packed with hay where the animals were. And, and, and then he's wrapped in clothes. And what's interesting, Jesus started his physical life inside of a cave wrapped in clothes. What's interesting is Jesus finished his physical life in a cave wrapped in linen. The beginning, the end, the entry, and the exit for Jesus it was a very humble, a very humble place. And the reason they're out there, the reason they're in this cave, this stable, if you will, is because there was no place for them in the inn. And that, and that phrase always has stuck with me, of just never wanting Christmas to be so busy and so packed and so me-focused that there's no place for Jesus. Maybe that's been your Christmas season up until now. What a great moment to realize it. And I encourage you even in this moment to, to give place for Jesus in this moment, in this day. Maybe as you even look towards 2021, of saying, I want to make sure I always have a place, actually front and center, middle of the room, middle of my life, a place for, for Jesus. The story gets better. Verse 8. Dr. Luke records, and in the same region, so we're now cut to a different scene, in the same region there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. What's interesting to note, the time of the year, and if they were keeping watch for their sheep by night, they were probably shepherds that were raising lambs for the Passover. It's interesting timing that God orchestrates everything, isn't it? And it says, verse 9, And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled. <laughs> they weren't filled with joy. They were filled with great fear. And in verse 10, it says, And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. What I love about this is God just interrupts the, the kind of the average ho-hum night shepherding you got the shepherds doing their shepherding thing. They're just working the night shift. And, and there's something about God. He has this ability to interrupt our lives at the most unique times. And he does it in a dramatic fashion. 
The angels show up. And whenever the angels show up, I think they were taught in angel school 101, the first words they're supposed to say to a human is, fear not. Because all of a sudden, if you find yourself in a, the presence of an angel, you're pretty freaked out at that moment. So they're very much accustomed. Hey, you humans, fear not. I, I, bring you, I bring you good news of great joy. And it's for all the people. What I love about that phrase, it's for all the people. It's for, it's for all of us that are really messy. I, you know, the shepherds weren't the highest kind of uh, rank on the food chain. But what's so cool about, about God is he came and announced his birth to the common folk. The folk that maybe were forgot, forgotten in society and overlooked and underestimated. It's a great reminder that the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is for all people. It's not, it's not just for some elite class or somebody that can, you know, answer all the questions right and they got everything kind of locked down. Shepherds, frankly, they were smelly people. Uh, what I love about the gospel is it's for all people, even those of us who come to Jesus with a mess. Let's just say it this way. We come kind of smelly. We come kind of dirty. What's so great about the gospel is you don't have to clean yourself up first. You just give your life to Jesus Christ, and he cleans you up. That's what he does. And so this gospel here, this great news, is, is for all the people. He continues, the angel continues, verse 11, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And then suddenly, as if that wasn't enough, and suddenly there was an angel, there with the angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. And so think there for a moment, these shepherds, their, their whole night has been changed. This angel appears, they're a little bit freaked out, and then all of a sudden, the sky bursts open, and the glory of God shines in a way that's really hard to put into words. Luke records that there was a multitude of heavenly hosts. Uh, some translations say myriad. Uh, let me just put it in vernacular. It's millions of angels. All of a sudden, the sky just lights up with this angelic hosts there praising God. The same angelic hosts that are probably 24-7 in heaven, always, always bowing down and worshiping God on his throne, are now appearing to these smelly, dirty shepherds, announcing not just a birth, but the birth of a king. Not just the birth of a king, but the king of kings. Not just the birth of a Lord, but the birth of a Lord of lords. This is now the Savior, the Messiah that they've been waiting for. And these shepherds were the first to hear of this good news. And what's so amazing is he didn't give us he didn't give us somebody to figure out our life. He didn't give us a marriage counselor. He didn't give us a financial guru. He didn't give us a life coach. What God gave us was something for our deepest need, and that was a Savior. A Savior who would save us from our sins. The great uh, story of Christmas is that somebody was born to save you from your sins. And the reality is that Savior someday would be the spotless lamb that was nailed to that cross, who endured all of the wrath and the punishment of my sin, so that God Almighty would treat Jesus as though he lived my life. And in God's mercy and grace, and I don't know why, he would choose to treat me as though I lived Jesus' life. That's what was born in Bethlehem. It wasn't just a baby. It was a Savior who would save us from our sins. Glory to God in the highest. When we think about this Christmas, it is, well, if I could use this word, it's a little bit obtuse. We haven't had all the run-up that we normally have in the normal ways. But that first Christmas was anything but normal too. And if there's a message that maybe we should hear this Christmas, he's literally... Those first words of the angels, fear not. We have watched almost for a year now 
not just our state, not just our country, not just our continent, but we've watched the entire world be gripped by fear. The message of Christmas needs to ring true in all of our hearts. Fear, fear not. Our greatest need, well, our greatest need is not a vaccine. Our greatest need is a savior. And I learned a long time ago that God doesn't always give me what I want, but he has given me my greatest need. And the reason he can say fear not is because he has met my greatest need, and that is eternal life, salvation, free of punishment from his holy wrath, and the ability to spend all of eternity in his presence with his people. So I have really ultimately nothing to fear here on earth. If I think about it from a theological perspective, my, my hope is, is, is not in the scientists, not in the doctors, not in the latest stats. My hope, my, my peace comes from a baby who was born 2,000 years ago who met my greatest need, and that was I needed a Savior, and that's what he was. That's who he is. And so this morning, I pray those two words kind of stick with you, fear not, fear not. Maybe hold on to those words for another seven days as we march into 2021. Maybe that's the, the anthem of our lives this next year, fear not, because, because our Savior has been born unto us. This morning, let's just all pray together and ask for God's blessing. Ask for God's blessing not only on this Christmas, but really this, this whole year that's approaching uh, so fast now in the final days of December, that Jesus would be our peace because he is our Savior, and therefore we, we fear not. Let's pray together. Father, I do, I do thank you for this story. And um, we have so many genres of literature that sometimes we we just kind of toss this into one of the other stories, but it's, it's anything but that. It's, it's not just a story, it's an account that was recorded so that we might be able to look back and see it anchored in history, the time of Caesar Augustus and his census, that it was during this time that Mary felt that first nudge of, oh, wow, it, it is time. And Father, like Paul said in Galatians, it was the fullness of time that had come. You had been driving history to that moment, and you have been driving history from that moment. And so, Father, we look back at this moment in time, and we see a great gift that was given to us, the gift of... Um, a savior because that is our deepest need father you didn't promise to save us from teenagers finances all the different types of crazy relationships we have bad marriages you promised to save us from one thing and that was from our sins and so this gift is an amazing gift the gift of of you coming, putting on flesh, God-man. Man so that you could pay the penalty of our sin, man's sin. But God-man so that you could conquer death to demonstrate so can we. So Father, may, may we this Christmas and as we step into a new year, may we um, revel in, may we reflect on these words, fear not. Fear not. Whatever may come to us, Lord, in this next year, help us to hold on to those words. Fear not, fear not. For our greatest need is taken care of. Everything else just kind of has to fall into place. But our hope, our confidence is in this, is in this baby. His name is Jesus. And it's in his name that we pray the name of Jesus. Amen.
Hey, Crossroads, thanks for uh, sharing your morning with us. Thanks for letting us in your living room with your family. Uh, we, we hope and pray that this, uh, this time together has ministered to you. And in many ways, we pray that it uh, has set the table for the Christmas day, Christmas season, the Christmas week. And we, our prayer simply is this, that you and your family are going to enjoy a great Christmas together, celebrating the birth of our, our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, from the Crossroads family uh, to your family, we just want to wish you, as we finish here this morning, we just want to wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas.